<laughs> um, so I'm like super excited because the LA Auto Show is going on and there's tons of terrific news coming out of the Auto yes. Show. Um, my first question is, the autonomous car seems to be a reality, at least in testing situations. How soon do you think this will become common on our highways and what's new about them at the show? You know, Antonio, when I look at the whole uh, buzz about autonomous cars, you know, I am pessimistic that we're going to see widespread use of autonomous, uh, uh, autonomous cars on open highways anytime soon. But what we are seeing very quickly is the features that these cars need to operate safely uh, migrate down from very expensive vehicles to mainstream vehicles. I'm standing next to uh, the Ford Escape, which has uh, been redone for 2017. It comes out next spring. So they've taken the Escape, which is a very popular uh, compact SUV, and basically made it look a lot better, in my opinion, improved the interior quite a bit by making more area for a little storage. But they really loaded it up with a lot of aut autonomous car-like uh, technology. It now has forward collision uh, warning. It's got lane keep assist. Uh, it can basically tell if you're getting drowsy behind the wheel. All of these features that you're going to need for autonomous cars. They've also added a new smartphone app so you can actually now communicate with the car. You can do remote start right from your uh, uh, phone. You can find where the vehicle is in a parking lot. All of these extra sensors that have to be perfected before we've got a fully autonomous car fleet on the road, they're doing it and they're doing all the testing right now in mainstream vehicles. So I think we're getting there, but we're not going to get there all the way right away. What are the most significant changes you've seen in the industry over the years? Wow, uh, that's a tough question. You know, one of the things I guess I have to say is just the incredible amount of sophistication that has been added to vehicles. You know, it used to be that you bought uh, an entry level vehicle and you got kind of a plain Jane car. Now you look at cars like they showed here yesterday, the uh, new uh, Hyundai Elantra. Okay, so we say this is a compact four door sedan. You may not expect much, but when you look at this car, you think, wow, it's now pretty big. It, five adults can sit into it. It's a midsize car on the inside. And they've again loaded it up. Here, here we've got a very affordable car loaded it up with all of the stuff that we're hearing about from autonomous cars. It has full auto braking and it can even uh, tell you if a pedestrian or a car is walking in front. It's got lane keep assist. Uh, it has very efficient uh, powertrains. So if fuel prices go back up, it'll be in step with it. So when I look at things like the Elantra, I say, you know, how sophisticated we've gotten great riding cars, they're good looking cars. Just because you buy an affordable vehicle today, uh, people aren't gonna look at you and say, you know, well, you're a tightwad or anything because it's a pretty <laughs> neat vehicle. But this, 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 everywhere you look, everything we used to equate with premium high-end cars, it's made its way down to affordable cars. It's just so amazing to see all the technology that you can get in some yeah. compact and compact vehicles versus like maybe the 90s and the 80s where they were just featured on high-end luxury vehicles. Correct. I got to tell you, there's one other thing that I like about this particular show. Uh, we're in California, right? So it's sunny, they have good weather most of the time. So what do you think about California? You think about convertibles, and there were some really cool convertibles. Now, I don't know if you're old enough to remember when the original Fiat 124 was out, or, but the most outrageous convertible here is what you're looking at right now is the Range Rover Evoque convertible, an SUV <laughs> convertible. But between that and Fiat showing its new 124 Spider sports car, you felt like saying, the heck with all of these sedans, let's just go out and put the top down and enjoy ourselves. So there's a little something for everybody at this show. Uh, there's something for the forward thinking people, uh, but there's also something just to go out and have a great drive today in. So, and that's what I find so exciting about auto shows. We used to come to an auto show and look at all these futuristic vehicles that never came true. Now they're coming true and you can buy them today. So going off of that, what do you think the future of the automobile is? Well, I think clearly the self-driving vehicle is going to have a part. Maybe it will be what 
you know, companies like Uber use, or maybe it becomes a taxi uh, fleet vehicle, or they use them within a controlled area like a college campus or a downtown area. Uh, I'm, I'm not buying into this thing that Americans have lost their desire to actually get in a car and drive. We're a big country. People like to go off the beaten path. So I think we're still going to have a modified love affair with the car, maybe a little more practical than it used to be. Uh, but at the same time, we're going to explore all this new technology. I'm very optimistic about the automobile industry. I've seen the automobile industry react very, very quickly uh, to changes in the last few years, much more quicker than, say, a decade or two decades ago. They're watching at what the uh, younger customers want. Uh, they're very aware, aware of the digital revolution, and they're trying to keep up with that. Uh, so our cars are clearly going to become basically more computers on wheel than they even are today. So my last question is, just a fun one, uh, what are some of your favorite vehicles coming out of the LA Auto Show? Well, I, I mentioned the Fiat 124 Spider. I have to tell you, I, you know, I'm, I grew up in the 60s. Uh, that was the little sports car that everybody my age wanted to have. Uh, on the other hand, if I won the lottery, I'd probably go over to Mercedes and uh, buy the uh, new SL, uh, which they've redone. There is one other little um, SUV that I happen to like, and it's actually from uh, Infiniti, and it's called the GX30. It really is a very stylish looking small SUV. Uh, it's obviously a luxury vehicle. And I think that's a new trend that we're seeing more and more of. These compact SUVs getting really uh, gussied up and becoming uh, status vehicles. So when I look at that and I look at the stuff around the show, I have to tell you though, my heart still goes back to that Fiat 124 Spider. It's so funny you mentioned mentioned the Infiniti QX30. That's actually one of my favorite vehicles. Oh, good. And I, and I actually would consider trading my Juke into that next year. Oh, I think it's got the Juke beat by a mile. And, and you know, really, it's a nice step up, too. Yeah, definitely. Um, I really want to thank you, uh, John, for taking out the time to close to me and my readers today. Um, I can't wait to share this with them. Thanks, Antonio. It was a real pleasure. Take care. Bye-bye.